Hello, this is Brianna Conway, the Spinidius correspondent. I am here with the Fertellis. We are at the Key Club in Los Angeles. How are you guys doing tonight? We're good. Good, thank, thank you. Good. Just get right into it then. Um, let's talk about the Costello music album. Um, did the critical acclaim of that debut album affect the approach of songwriting recording on the Here We Stand album at all? I'm not sure we were critically acclaimed. I don't know. <laughs> Not as far as I remember. It actually made it easier, you know, because if you're not critically acclaimed once and it, and it doesn't actually harm anything and you still got to where you got to, it doesn't actually matter, you know, so it makes it easier. How did the first one affect the Here We Stand album at all? Um, just that um, we didn't want to do the exact same thing again. You know. okay. We're very conscious of not making a Castello Music Mark II, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, which is probably why we produced it on our own rather than use a producer and uh, done it in Glasgow as opposed to maybe coming back here. And then with that new album you guys did try your hand at producing it. Yeah. Um, was it a tough process and what did you guys learn that you'll do differently in the future? We, we learned that um, there's a whole mythology built up um, uh, around producers and production that not that isn't necessarily true, you know. Um, it's not the most difficult thing in the world, but at the same time, we still made mistakes, you know, we still got some things wrong. But it, it did show that, you know, you don't always need this uh, this sort of Jiminy Cricket on your shoulder, jabbering away in your ear, telling you what you should be doing all the time, you know. But this time we had our own studio in Glasgow as well, so we weren't against the clock at all, so if we did make mistakes, we had lots of time to go on and... I think we ended up redoing a whole track, we didn't tell me a lie. We did, yeah. We done it at the start, and uh, because we weren't used to the sound of the room, etc., it didn't sound too good. Then we re-recorded it at the end, and that's the one that ended up in the album. So. And you've previously claimed that the tune "Tell Me a Lie" is about the half truths that you guys have told journalists. What's the biggest lie you guys have ever told a journalist or a reporter? That we don't tell lies. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, the best one I told is uh, that I was Italian, and. Uh, yeah, my, my surname used to be Fratelli, and my mother's, it was my mother's maiden name, and it was just a lot of shit, and they believed it, and uh... Your poor mum. I know, but I think my dad got really upset with that. Yeah. It was really just, honestly, it was just to see, uh, see what, what we could get printed. What we could get away with, you know, and see... It's quite childish, really. It was funny, though. <laughs> just to see how much uh, research people done before they come and interview you, you okay. know? And they'll take everything you say as gospel, and before you know it, you've got so many lies. Very tricky. I like the, like the one where uh, I worked on an old folk song and uh, I used to bathe the old folk. That was my fault. And, and, <laughs> and change the clothes and stuff. You're reading a rock. I've never even met an old person. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing I heard this time when we got here in Boston, the first thing I put on TV, and it happened before, one of the other first times we came, last time, New York, and put the TV on, there was a Shrek 3 advert. <laughs> which had one of our songs on it. and uh, But this time it was the Amstel advert, and as soon as I put the TV on, it came on, and I started screaming, going, <laughs> fucking hell, who the hell, who let them use that? And then I realised it was me. <laughs> From months ago, that I'd said okay to that yeah, one. It. Yeah, it was, it was Amstel or something. Uh, man, some people would have a go at you for those sort of things, but it does sort of give you that little bit of a leg up that you wouldn't normally get. I think if any any band said they were uh, bothered by that and they didn't want their music to to be listened to as many people as possible, then they're obviously lying through their teeth. You well, know, some, some people must. Some people look yeah. at really loads and loads of morals. We don't have any. I'd, I mean, I just don't have any. We used to. I'm sure we had morals when we started this band, but it's standards. <laughs> yeah, standards have slipped. What advice would you guys give to upcoming bands that are trying to get going? Have no morals whatsoever, and you'll get really far. Don't take no for an answer. Yeah. Yeah, probably simple as that. Just never give up. If you're if you're good enough, and uh, you believe in enough, uh, believe in yourself enough, sorry, then you you'll get somewhere. Having a sort of DIY attitude helps. Mm -hmm. That you can sort of that you're quite content and happy to do everything on your own terms. You know, um, whether that be the gigs that you play or the people that you associate with. Um, but there's no like there's no secret recipe. No, it's just uh, I, I, no. We were just very lucky. And also we we did have that a huge DIY attitude and we never uh, in the UK there's a thing especially called pay to play. So you have to if you turn up at a show 
and there's maybe four bands, and each one of those bands have to give the promoter a hundred pounds before they can even go on the stage, you know. And uh, we were very conscious of not doing that, so and, uh, we we never actually had to do that, and it's something we're we're really proud of. So we always put on our own shows. So we did just the models. That's what that happened. To them. Right, right. <laughs> And then the last one I have for you guys here, um, what is your interpretation of the word superstar? Depends how much you let everything go to your head, I suppose. You can be as, be as successful as you can be, but just not be a dick about it, probably. So the word, I think the word superstar just means an usher, people like that. We run Anybody that sells like perfume on their own website, man. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a superstar and a monster. That's, yeah. what, that's what they said about, do you remember? What? Usher sells Aftershave on his website. It's cologne for him. You guys have no plans to come out with cologne or perfume? No, no I'm going to sell models, peanut butter. So. <laughs> no. gonna, peanut gonna... butter and, uh, there you go. Dogs, maybe, yeah, yeah that, you, you, just, you just don't want to get too big for your own boots, I suppose. Um, my, my boots are too big for me, actually. <laughs>